open the floodgates of heaven. Oh, hallelujah. Let it rain. Hallelujah. Woo. I just want to say, open the floodgates of heaven. Let it rain. Let it rain. I wish I had some help today. Open the floodgates of heaven.
Thank God. I want you to know that there is power in the name of Jesus Christ. Yes, sir. And um, a lot more power than a lot of the average Pentecostal knows that's there. And uh, Paul, the Bible said, I was reading this evening in the book of Acts, and the Bible said that Paul, from his body, he could not pray for everybody. They didn't have telephones and, and uh, internets and all that. And uh, Paul couldn't get to everybody. Multitudes wanted prayer and needed prayer. Come on, brother. And uh, the Bible said that from Paul's body, they took handkerchiefs and on, aprons and they laid them on people. Yes. And there was power. Yes. There was power in those handkerchiefs Come on, brother. Hey, and in those aprons. And uh, when people that were sick, whoo, boy, I feel the Holy Ghost here tonight. When people that were sick saw those handkerchiefs and aprons, uh, disease fled. <laughs> That's it. When demons saw those handkerchiefs and aprons, demons fled. That's it. Amen. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. Some of y'all looking at me a little puzzled. But there's power. Thank God. And the Bible said that you shall receive power after that the Holy Ghost come upon you. And he said these things, Jesus said, these things that I do shall you do also and greater things. That's it. Amen. Come on. Hallelujah. So there's power. Yes, and, and there's power in our hands. And uh, I know that, uh, you know, uh, a lot of people don't even believe that. Uh, but uh, the Bible said that Peter, walking by, when his shadow passed over people, they were healed. Amen. <laughs> Isn't that awesome? Yes, sir. The power, that's it. But it's all, it's all in the name of Jesus Christ. Amen. Thank Amen. God. Come on, come on. I said it's all in the name of Jesus Christ. That's it. And uh, we are living in the last days. I know one of our national officials the other day on uh, I think they said national television and hookup they said that he was making a speech and he said what we need today is a new world order and this was one of our highest officials so there's no use for us to stick our head in the ground like an ostrich and say maybe if we hide our eyes it'll go away yeah. it's not gonna go away oh, all of the time that Paul was preaching all of the time that he was laying hands on the sick and they was being healed diverse kinds of miracles uh, demon spirits coming out all this time uh, Rome was waiting down the road for Paul. Come on, brother. Hallelujah. <laughs> Hallelujah. Did you hear what I said? Rome was waiting down the road for the Apostle Paul. Amen. And it didn't matter how many miracles that he done, his destiny was waiting on him. And, and listen to me tonight. The Bible said to work while it's day. Don't make it work. Ooh, you better get to work while you can. You better pray up till you can witness to a soul under the anointing of the Holy Ghost. 
and see them stirred and moved by the power of God through your testimony. Hallelujah. The Bible said in the book of Jude, if you have your Bibles, this kind of going to be a little plethora, kind of a scatter barrel, I guess, tonight. But uh, Jude was saying here in about the 17th verse, But beloved, remember ye the words which were spoken before of the apostles of our Lord Jesus Christ. How that they told you there should be mockers in the last time. Now, we got them. There should be mockers in the, you know, I've read to you several times lately uh, that anyone that denies that Jesus Christ is come in the flesh, the Bible said he is a antichrist. Come on, that's it. That's the reason the Antichrist is going to be able to take over. Is because they got so many churches today. They don't believe that Jesus is God. They think he's a second person in the Trinity. Or they think he was just a babe in a manger. Or a gentle shepherd. But I'm telling you. Amen. He's the God of creation. And the Bible said in the beginning was the Word. The Word was with God. The Word was God. And the Word was made flesh and dwelt among us. That's it. Come on. Amen. Come on. Who should walk after their own ungodly lust. These be they who separate themselves. You know we got... We got that religion that uh, they separate themselves and and uh, wear their robes and Come on. amen. But listen to what the Bible said: having their sensual, having not the spirit, amen. And I'm going to tell you something: the Word of God declares that you should call no man father on this earth. Right. Come on. Come on now. For he said, one is your father. Thank God if he dwells, if he's the one that dwells in the heaven. And he has a name. I said he has a name. Father's not a name. Son's not a name. Spirit's not a name. But Jesus Christ, uh, thank God, is the name that's above every name in this world. Could we praise him? I, I've got about eight pages and I'll never get to them. I know. But Jason, you can hold up five fingers at the wall. And, and uh, the Bible said in the book of Hebrews, the second chapter, if you brought your Bible. And the name of my sermon tonight is looking for a way out. Everybody is looking for a way out. The prisoner is looking for a way out of jail. The drug addict is looking for a way to kick the habit. The sick is looking for a way to get healed. The poor is looking for a way to get rich. Hallelujah. But the Bible said in the book of Hebrews, the second chapter, it says, How shall we escape? You looking for a way out? I want to tell you tonight how you can find it. How shall we escape if we neglect so great salvation? Which at the first began to be spoken by the Lord and was confirmed unto us by them that heard him. God also bearing them witness, both with signs and wonders. Here we are again. The Bible said these signs shall follow, shall follow who? Them that believe. Believers. Are you a believer? Yes. Come on. Yes. Come on. 
you got to have some signs. You need some signs behind you. You don't have to be a preacher to have signs. But with signs and wonders and with divers miracles and gifts of the Holy Ghost according to His own will. Hallelujah. Turn with me to the book of Genesis the 19th chapter if you will. And uh, I want to, if you, you that are keeping notes, I want you to write. This is the generation of Lot. This is the generation of Lot. Now Lot, when he came with Abraham, they was from a place called Haran. And that word Haran, it means fire, baked, scorched. It was a rough land. And even Abraham's dad was an idolater. He worshipped idols. They come out of a land where they worshipped idols. I want you to notice now, God brought them out. <laughs> Hallelujah to God. If you seek God with all of your heart, God will never leave you to die in your sin. Come on. Hallelujah. Come on. He brought them out. And he was had fellowship with godly Abraham. You need to stay close to your church people. Yes. Stay on. close to your brothers and sisters in the Lord. That's it. Come on, baby. Uh, whoa. Hallelujah. And, uh, but he traveled with godly Abraham. But there was something that was in Abraham that was not in Lot. And in the end time, we find that Lot wound up in the gate of Sodom. That's it, Come on. And, and it breaks my heart when I see a lot of these people on Facebook. I saw one that I was so familiar with. My own grandson, he was holding up his little baby maybe two, three, I don't know. And he said, uh, named him, and he said, uh, he was grinning big and said, uh, uh, whatever his name was, he said he got his first tattoo today. And people are going to get those things. And yet the Bible said, the Bible was against people making markings on their body. That's it, amen. Our bodies are a temple of the Holy Ghost. That's it. Woo! Is this okay tonight? Yes, sir. Come on. Hallelujah. And, uh, but Lot wound up in the very gate of Sodom. Sodom was a type of the world. And I'm telling you, this younger generation, amen, it's almost like anything goes. They're sitting in the very gate of Sodom. And Jude said, in some of that I read you while ago, he said, pulling them out of the fire. Hating even the smell of the garment of flesh. And I'm going to tell you something. If we have revival, brother, today we're going to have to, we're going to have to get the power of God moving in our lives like never before. 
We're going to have to shake our city. Amen. We're going to have to shake them loose. People will never come to God till they realize they're lost. That's it. Amen. In the 18th chapter of Revelation, after these things, I saw another angel. Now this, I, I told you the other day, this really disturbs me. Because this is talking about the end time church. This, this just disturbs me greatly. He said, I saw another angel come down from heaven, having great power. And the earth was lightened with its glory. And he cried mightily with a strong voice saying the world everybody say Babylon, Babylon. everybody say Babylon. Babylon the great is fallen Babylon the great is fallen Babylon is a type of the world and notice what the world has become the world you and I live in Notice what it has become. It has become the habitation of devils. You ever see devils in this world today? Some of you work with them. Some of you work with them. But if you sometimes if they get mad. Sometimes if they get mad, you can see the devil in their eyes. Come on, how many of you have seen that before? But you know what thrills me? Greater, everybody say greater. Greater is he that's in me than he that's in the world. He has no power other than what God will allow him over one of his saints of God. And the Bible said it's the hold of ever foul spirit. And a cage of ever unclean and hateful bird. Now these are things that's in the world. Yes, yes. Yes, sir. That's it. And they're here. I'm going to get out where you live in here a little bit. Amen. Come on, preach. But then John said, I heard. I heard another voice from heaven. That's it. And this is the voice that disturbed me. He said, come out of her. My people. My people. Yes. Come out of this world. Come out of that world where there's so many unclean spirits and, and doctrines of devils. Let me tell you something. You better get sold out that any man that can be saved in this last day, the only way they'll ever be saved is to repent of their sins uh, and get baptized in the name of Jesus Christ for the remission of those sins and receive the gift of the Holy Ghost with the evidence of speaking in tongues and walk with God. Come on, brother. Yes, Thank you, Lord. Thank you, Lord. Now you can shake all the preacher's hand in the country. You can make all the decisions you want to. But until you do what I just told you, you're not going to be saved. Come on, brother. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. Woo! He said, come out of her, my people. And, and listen, uh, it's not something that people start out to do. They just... They just let down standards a little bit at a time. I could name you churches in Memphis that used to have a real holiness standard. And now, matter of fact, I heard of one this last Christmas or something that uh, they, uh, they just asked everybody that wanted to be saved. And uh, they said, we're all to come up there collectively and uh, we're going to repeat the sinner's prayer. Can you? Can you believe that? 
Huh? Look at for a way out. John the third chapter he said, this is what condemns. This is, this is what condemns the world. This is the condemnation that light is coming to the world. Jesus is the light of the world. And men love darkness rather than light because their deeds were evil. 1 John, the second chapter, said, Love not the world, neither the things that are in the world. If any man love the world, the love of the Father is not in him. That's it. Hallelujah. Looking for a way out. When God spoke to Noah, God didn't tell him that he could take the Queen Elizabeth transatlantic liner but if Lot was to get out of the world he had to ride the ark there wasn't no other way you hear what I'm saying there was no other way Come on. if he wanted out he had to get on the ark hallelujah and if you want to be saved, you're going to have to get in the ship. Hallelujah to God. You hear what I'm saying? The old ship of Zion. You're going to have to get on board the ship and stay in the ship. Come on, that's it. I was looking this evening, I'm sure some of y'all have uh, heard of Alcatraz. And... Uh, I remember a preacher friend of mine, I won't call his name because this goes all over the world, and he's a precious friend of mine, and so is his son. But his son, when he was little, he was a mean little scamp. I mean, he was a booger. And uh, one day, I asked him, I said, what do you want to be when you grow up? He said, a convict. I said, boy, you're heading in the right direction. <laughs> Hallelujah. <laughs> Everybody say, looking for a way out. Everybody say, looking for a way out. But Alcatraz was started in about 1860 as an army fort. But it was made a prison and remained a prison for about a hundred years. And in 1934, it became a maximum penitentiary. Men like John Dillinger, Babyface Nelson, the, all of those was inmates. But if you went to Alcatraz and you started looking for a way out, it was out in the middle of San Francisco Bay. Come on, there wasn't no way out. And it sat on a 22 acre rocky plateau, just rocks. And it had high fences topped with barbed wire. And it had towers ever so often that guards was in there with machine guns. And besides that, San Francisco Bay had a swift current. And it was filled with sharks. Woo, I got to reading about that. And it, it was kind of a hopeless situation if you got in there. That's it. But if you was looking for a way out, there was only one way to get out of there, and that was by boat. Come on. Woo! Hallelujah to God. If you got out of there, you was going to get on the boat. And if you ever get out of this world, 
amen, of sin and corruption. If you ever get out of this world, you're going to have to get on board the ship, the ship of Zion, and you're going to have to stay with the ship. Let's lift our hands and praise Him. I just got to give you this here. Paul was on his way to Rome as a prisoner. And uh, they run into a storm. It's what we would call a hurricane. And, uh, or a cyclone, something. It was bad. And the thing about it, the ship just stayed with it. It just kept pushing the ship for days and days. And they lightened the ship and uh, they did everything they could, but they could not turn the ship. And uh, after, after many days, <laughs> all hope was gone that they should be saved. But Paul stood among them and he said, listen to me. An angel of God whose I am stood by me this night and said, Paul, I've given you all that's on board this ship, but they've got to stay in the ship. Woo! Hallelujah to God. Oh, I declare to you, if you're not in the ship, you better get in the ship today. Come on, brother. Hallelujah. it up. And some of the men was going to try to sneak around. They was going to drop the anchors to see where they was. And some of the men was going to sneak around, sneak off of the boat. But Paul told the centurion, said, except these abide in the ship, you can't be saved. You probably never saw this before, but I want to get this to you. And so the centurion gave the order. To cut the ropes. How many of you ever noticed that? He said, cut the ropes. And I believe the Lord showed me. There's some ropes that you need to cut in your life. You need to cut the rope of nobody can tell me what to do. Somebody's going to tell you what to do. Everybody keep your mind right on the Lord. The Holy Ghost is here tonight. Some of you need to cut the ropes of TV addiction. You just lay up there and watch that, the old worldly programs all the time. Cussing. Nakedness. Some of you need to cut some ropes with your children. Turn them over to God and say, God, I know you can save them. Quit compromising the world. If those soldiers, if those soldiers had not cut those ropes, they'd have been lost. And you need to cut some ropes in your life. Because I want to tell you something. In 2 Peter, and I'm closing, I've got six more pages, but I'm closing. 2 Peter, the third chapter. But the day of the Lord will come as a thief in the night. 
in the which the heavens shall pass away with a great noise and the elements shall melt with fervent heat the earth also and the works that are therein shall be burned up seeing then all these things shall be dissolved what manner of persons ought ye to be in all holy conversation in God looking for you know what we're looking for we're not looking to retire we're not looking for a raise necessarily but we're looking for the coming of the Lord for the coming of the day of God wherein the heaven shall be on fire shall be dissolved and the elements shall melt with fervent heat Lord have mercy in closing tonight there was a man there was a man in the Bible by the name of Shimei and most of you know him When David was having to flee, he followed along by David and threw rocks at him and cursed him. And when David was dying, he told Solomon, his son, said, you remember Shimei and don't let his head go down to the grave in peace. And Solomon told Shimei, said, now you settle down over here, Jerusalem. And he said, you stay there. My God, why can't we get people to stay in church? <laughs> Woo! Why can't we get folks to stay in church? He said, you stay here. said, because in the day that you cross the brook Kedron, you're going to die. He stayed there three years. But after the third year, two of his servants ran away. And he forgot Solomon's word. And he left and went and got them served. If he'd have just stayed where he belonged. Find the church where they preach the truth and where they'll love you and try to help you go to heaven and stay there. That's it. Come on. Woo. Come on. Lord have mercy, I feel it here tonight. Stay there. Support that church with everything that's in you. Because the Bible said a man couldn't serve two masters at once. You can't do it. And if you don't feel like this is where God wants you, I want you to hit the road and go where, because you won't bless us if you feel like you're out of the will of God. But if you feel like this is the place, that God wants you. You need to get in here and just become a big part of us. Hallelujah to God. Woo! Hallelujah to God. Hallelujah. Everybody say, Preacher, you're preaching the word. I wish we had, I wish we had 200. And if we'd let down the hedge, I guarantee you we could have this building full. Like some of these other folks have done, let down the barriers, let down the standards, let them dress like they want to dress, act like they want to act. 
But if we did, we wouldn't have nothing. You know? All we'd have is a big old blob of nothing. Woo, would you stand with me tonight? Looking for a way out. Look at Pearl. On the day of Pentecost, they said, Men and brethren, what shall we do to inherit eternal life? What do we need to do? Peter stood up and said, Repent, every one of you, and be baptized in the name of Jesus Christ for the remission of sin, and you shall receive the gift of the Holy Ghost. For the promise is to you, to your children, to all that are far off, even as many as the Lord our God shall be. I wonder if there's somebody here tonight that you'd like to come and pray a while, would you? If you feel like you need to pray a while, would you come?